Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of my series, The Worst Baseball Cards of All Time. And tonight I have 1995 Fleer coming in at number 8 on my list. And here I have a wax box from 1995 of, I believe it's 36 packs. Um, we're going to talk about why this set is so terrible in a minute, but first let's take a look at the box itself. You can see there are 600 cards in the set. There are also six unique card designs, which we'll look at that a little more in a minute. There's also hot packs, and when you think of hot packs, you think of autographs, right? Well, in 1995, a hot pack was just a pack with nothing but insert cards in it, so... We'll be looking at the insert cards in a moment. I believe every single pack of 95 Fleer comes with one insert card, which, I mean, I guess is pretty cool. Uh, there's the breakdown on the back of the insert cards that we can look for. And uh, that's about it for the box. So let's get into this and open this up and see exactly why I think this is one of the worst sets of all time. Let me get this open. First of all, these boxes are kind of hard to come by. I had to pay, I think, $26 to track down a box of these on eBay. You don't really find them too often out and about at flea markets or card stores or anything like that. Here's a look at the... If I can get it open here. Kind of a weird little security peel tab there. See that? That's different. Here's a look at the packs. You can see they are ugly mustard yellow. Uh, almost, almost makes you want to look away from the packs. Kind of reminds me of uh, 1991 Fleer. I don't know what Fleer is in their obsession with yellow, but yellow and green for the wrappers. Pretty ugly. And uh, almost as ugly as the cards inside. You can see there's 12 cards per pack. Um... The, they have a rookie set exchange card. By the way, one of the reasons this set is so terrible is because there are 600 cards in the pack, and there's only two rookie cards in the entire set. That's right, two rookie cards, and they are they're complete commons. Um, Dave Varis and I think Brad Cornelt or something like that. So if you like rookie cards and collecting rookie cards like I do, this set is going to leave you pretty disappointed so here is a look at 1995 Fleer and you can probably see right off the bat why I really dislike this look at what is going on on this first card what the heck it's got his biographical information all over the card it's got a weird background um you gotta like look around for his name for a while and then you eventually find it at the bottom but a lot of 95 Fleer, they have six different designs, so I believe this is the American League Central design. It's just crazy. I don't know why they decided to do this. I, I literally hate looking at these cards because they're so just terrible. Look at this one. This must be the uh, National League West. You can see you have to take a minute and even figure out who it is. If you don't know your old players like by their face, You gotta. it's almost like, I don't know, you have to look around. Almost like a Where's Waldo kind of deal. So you can see up there, um, Jeff. Um, and then you got to like look at it. Is that a swear word there? Or, oh, yeah, it's pitcher. But it looks like it says Jeff. I don't even. I'm not going to say. But there it is down at the bottom. Jeff. And then it's in cursive. So Jeff Tabaka. And then Mike Benjamin. So the designs are just awful. I can't. I hated these when I was growing up. There, there you have the uh, National League East design there. with looks like a. I don't know, uh, it looks like they use like a heat infrared picture there. I don't, I don't know what's going on with any of these. And then you have your insert card in the middle of the pack, which is the best part of these cards. It's another design with just crazy stuff. But you can see Jeff Bagwell, um, one of the seven insert series, three of six. Uh, back in the day, everybody used to like the insert cards in the 90s. So that would have been pretty cool. But then you have to deal with all this other crap. Bob Wickman. And um, you, can, you can't you can really even like look quickly at their names. Jim Bullinger and 
Al Leiter because you can't find their names for the most part. So that's why I think this is one of the worst sets of all time. The design is atrocious. The set list is completely void of rookies. Um, David Segui. At least they're not sticking together. That's always kind of terrible. Bill Spires, Moise Salou, Kevin Apier making a one of his derpy faces that he makes when he throws. Let's get right to the insert. There we go. Derek Jeter. That's literally the best card that you can find in the entire set, I do believe. Derek Jeter, Major League Prospects insert card. If you believe Beckett prices, this book's for $4. Uh, that's the best card in the insert set. Uh, tied with Alex Rodriguez for some reason. But Derek Jeter, that is a nice one. Obviously, his rookie card is 1993. But um, check out the back. Derek Jeter, number 7 of 10. So not a bad card there. At least that saves the uh, save the box, box a little bit. Rick Wilkins. Let's see if we can find some stars now. Probably the best star in here would be... Um, I don't know. They have lots of... Ken Griffey Jr., Kyra Epson Jr., Barry Bonds, Greg Maddox. A lot of Hall of Famers and stuff because it seems like they just went with all the veterans in this set. All right, here's the next uh, next pack. You can see they do stick together a little bit. There's Tom Glavin, 300 game winner and Hall of Famer. Frank Thomas, back-to-back. -back. But just look how busy the cards are. Like, why would you ever want to, like, get that autographed? A lot of people like to get their cards from the 90s autographed. I mean, if you got one of these cards autographed, you'd probably like not even be able to see the autograph. It'd just get lost in the just jumbled mess of height, weight, position, throws. Um, oh, they even have like text on there that you can read about. Uh, Frank Thomas was born in Columbus, Georgia on um, May whatever. And then there's the back. The back is actually a lot nicer than the front. They cleaned it up a little bit. Um, only have his, his, the stats on there, all that biographical information. They just decided to put on the front of the card for some reason. I don't know why they couldn't just put it down there. Michael Tucker. Then we have a Danny Jackson. Let's just find our insert card. There's the insert. It's Roberto Alomar. I believe there's always another guy on the back of these. Yep. This was the all-star card. They have the second base, Mariana Duncan and... Roberto Alomar, I don't know what the odds are on that would be. Um, it's kind of tough to tell. It looks like, um, I don't know, those cards aren't really worth much at all. Just looking over, I have the uh, Beckett off to the side here. Of course, Beckett prices aren't really reliable because you could probably go and buy that card for like, I don't know, five cents on eBay or whatever. But you'd have to, of course, pay the shipping. But I just like to uh, look at it just to kind of get an idea. Kind of like a ballpark. All right, here's our next pack. Looks like we have a rookie prospect. So I guess by taking out all the rookies in the set, it makes the rookie prospect cards all the more valuable. Ray Durham had a pretty nice career. Then we have a Andre Dawson, the Hawk, Paul Wagner from the Buccos, and um, Gerald Perry. All right, our next pack. Looks like the best cards here, just looking over them. The best um, insert cards are going to be the Lumber Company. So we'll have to see if we pull any Lumber Company cards. Larry Walker, Dante Bichette. His son will be coming up, I don't know, probably at some point. He's injured right now, Bo Bichette, for the Blue Jays. Another Jeff Bagwell. Um, I don't even know what this insert is called. I think it's called Provisions. Um, uh, I don't really stated odds. One in nine. One in nine per pack. So we already got two Jeff Bagwells. Omar Vizquel, future Hall of Famer, I think. I think Vizquel will get in there one of these days. Now that defense is valued a lot more highly, especially in this analytical era. Latroy Hawkins, he played for a while. Alex Diaz, where's our insert card? There it is. Albert Bell and Marquise Grissom. Not a bad one right there. Both of those guys played for the Indians for a time. At one point, 
uh, during their careers. Albert Bell was an absolute beast during the 90s. Unfortunately, he had a hip issue. Had to uh, hang it up early. Jeff Kent, another guy who I think is going to probably be in the Hall of Fame at some point. A lot of writers don't like Jeff Kent because he made their job kind of tough because Jeff Kent never liked to really talk after the games. Not a very nice guy. But uh, the most career home runs for a second baseman, so you got to think that he deserves a little more consideration. There's Apollo O'Neill, all-star um, insert card with Dante Bichette. This was from the 1994 all-star game, which, by the way, was held at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. And I was at that home run derby. I saw the Frank Thomas home run into the upper deck there. One of the longest home runs ever hit at that stadium. I was only about two sections away, and it's pretty awesome. Went with my family. My brother was there with me, and my dad, and I think my mom was there too. There's a Will Clark. One of these all-star ones again. And then Carlos Garcia, the Pirates representative back in 1994. Every team has to have a representative in the All-Star game no matter what. So Carlos Garcia was never really thought of as a star. But he was the best Pirates player. So he got the call um, that year for the Buccos. There's Albert Bell. We just talked about him for a minute. Aaron Seeley. My brother liked Aaron Seeley for a while. Another All-Star card. Yvonne Rodriguez and Mike Piazza. So you can see there's 25 of these. So there's quite a few um i guess they did one for every spot on the roster it seems like but yvonne rodriguez was a definite all-star very deserving also very deserving of the hall of fame one of the best catchers arguably of all time guy had a cannon for an arm you never ran on yvonne rodriguez he would throw you out all right sticking together a little bit here we've got a uh, john Franco, left-handed closer for the Mets and also the Reds for many years. Another one of these. Frank Thomas, kind of disappointing when your insert card is always the same insert uh, set. Greg Jeffries, a lot of people consider Greg Jeffries a bust. Um, personally, I consider him a bust because his rookie card was once the most sought-after card in the hobby, and now it's worth five cents. In fact, I wouldn't even pay a penny for his rookie card now. But he did have a several good seasons and made the all-star team back in 1994. As you see there, whenever I call Greg Jeffries a bust, I get several nasty comments. People rattling off his career statistics. But yeah, Greg Jeffries was a one-time all-star. So he wasn't a bust as a player, but as an investment for um, collectors, definitely a bust. I'm sure people that spent a bunch of money collecting Greg Jeffries cards would consider him a bust. Armando Benitez, if you're a Mets fan, you remember him. Probably not all that warmly as he was a closer for you guys and uh, used to make things interesting from time to time in the ninth inning. All right, here's our next pack. We've got, who do we have in here? Jack McDowell. I remember he flicked off the entire crowd one time when they were booing him coming off the mound. So that was a low point in his career, obviously. Paul O'Neill and Dante Bichette again. Got a double there of that one. I'm trying to see which one. I'd, I'd like to find the Barry Bonds Lumber Company card. We haven't found any Lumber Company yet. Looking over... The uh, odds on that, the Lumber Company is about 1 in 24 packs, so we might not even find one of those, but we shall see. Here's uh, Graham Lloyd. He's from Down Under, from Australia, which is cool. We have about 1% of my subscribers are from Australia, so um, that's kind of interesting to me since they don't really have baseball in Australia. They have cricket, but I guess baseball is gaining a little bit of momentum over there. Baseball, Major League Baseball went over and held a game over in Australia several years ago. Of course, I didn't go, but I would have loved to have. There's a Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire's cards are still holding some value in the hobby. <clears throat> um, I would say that McGuire, a lot of people think McGuire should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't know where I am on that. I always go back and forth. McGuire definitely has the home run numbers. By the way, there's a Trevor Hoffman right there, and I would be remiss to uh, just gloss over Trevor Hoffman, but this card is so darn ugly that it's tough to look at. Trevor Hoffman, of course, 
Second most saves of all time. And we get to Derek Jeter again. So two Derek Jeters. How about that? Was not expecting to get um, two Derek Jeters, but I'll take it. Major League Prospects, Derek Jeter, that's a, a lot better than getting, like, say, an Alan Bennis or Brian L. Hunter or Orlando Miller or Armando Benitez again, for that matter. If you want to get a good one, that's the best one you can get out of the uh, insert set. So that's pretty cool. Two Jeters. Steve Traxel, this guy took forever to throw a pitch. Um, might as well brought a, a freaking pillow and blanket to a Steve Traxel game because um, there was no pitch clock back then, but they should have put one in play for Traxel games. Very slow worker. All right, next one we have on the front Jeff Russell, Walt Weiss. Walt Weiss was, has had a good career. Also a, a manager at uh, one point. Frank Thomas All-Star card with Greg Jeffries again. So that's our second one of that. Cecil Fielder. And then we have Dave Clark. Dave Clark. Coach for the Tigers last time I checked. I remember one of the most violent collisions I ever saw was Dave Clark and Jacob Brumfield. Just both going all out for a ball. Full sprint and just um, colliding headfirst into each other. That was a very scary moment back in, I think that was around 1995. That would have been right around this time period. There's this Alomar insert card again with Mariano Duncan. But you can see that these, I hate how every card has a different design. That's, that's another thing I don't really like. The designs are way too busy as it is. But then like... Um, there's six different designs in the set, which is um, just terrible. There's a Pedro Martinez, Jay Buhner. Let's find the insert card. Albert Bell, Marquise Grissom. The insert cards are what saves this set from being a lot higher on my list and not being like in the top five for the worst sets of all time. I'm actually kind of interested to see if we pull any of those Lumber Company ones. But the base set itself, just absolutely terrible. Like... Albi Lopez. You have to take a minute to even find um, who the player is. Not sure why they did, did the uh, designs like this. There's a Barry Bonds. Um, it would just look so much better if there was an actual background instead of all this garbage in the background. It literally t looks like someone just took a bunch of garbage and threw it all over a floor and just took a picture of it and then put Barry's image over it. Just completely ugly. I would much rather have a nice clean card have their name down there at the bottom. It's okay to be borderless. That's fine. Just could have done a, ni a much nicer job. I think Flair went through a little um, little stage where they did that. I forget. There was another another release out there, which you might be seeing, where they had like quotes on the card. Um, it might have been 95 or 96. I have it written down. We'll have to see if that makes my top 10. Here's a uh, league leader, Tony Gwynn insert card. A lot of people like Tony Gwynn. I love Tony Gwynn. Used to uh, love watching him. Professional hitter. All right, here is our next pack. We have Rudy Sanez, or Sanez, Sanez on the front. Tommy Green, who threw a no-hitter at one point. Eric Karos, former Rookie of the Year. Uh, Bip Roberts, getting to that insert card. It's a Wade Boggs with the Yankees. Most people remember him as being a, a Red Sox star, but he did go over to the Yankees and continue to have good years. And uh, then he went to the Rays. Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer. Um, Wes Chamberlain, can't even really tell his name, but I can see it's like cut off down there at the bottom, I guess, or you can maybe try to locate the small print up there, which is perpendicular to the bottom of the card, which is just a terrible place for the name. And then Mike Bordick, um, out of the six designs, I don't know which one's the best because they're all pretty bad. It's definitely not the NL West. I hate the NL West design i hate the uh, there's that nl west design again william van landingham this guy's name took up his entire jersey he used to like go like that like a big horseshoe because he had so many letters in his last name william van landingham i really honestly can't tell you which one is the best design american league central is pretty crappy also um then you have 
Like, what is that? Look at that. That's just scary looking. Like, why are they? If I was uh, Ryan Bowen, I'd not be happy with it, making me look like some kind of, like, freaking zombie on my card. But it is what it is. That's Fleer for, for the uh, 90s for you. There's Jim Tomey, Hall of Famer. I don't know if I missed the insert card or not. I don't see one in there. Maybe I did. Did we see an insert card in that pack? I was so kind of distracted <clears throat> by the Ryan Bowen. I don't think we got an insert in that pack, did we? Unless it was that Wade Boggs. I can't remember. All right, next pack. We're getting down towards the bottom of the box. Maybe only like 10 of these awful packs left. Roberto Kelly. Um, again, like look at his teeth. Just the uh, imaging just makes, makes it look terrible. There's Randy Johnson, league leader. Randy Johnson, a.k.a. the big unit. Used to like watching him pitch. I think I only ever saw Randy Johnson pitch once that I can remember. It was when Johnson was with the Houston Astros. He was traded over um, in 1997 and uh, pitched for the Houston Astros. and was absolutely dominant. And I remember going to Three River Stadium to see him pitch. can't remember if I ever saw him pitch besides that. But he was definitely one of the greatest of all time. Bo Jackson... Another one of the, uh, well, he's not one of the all-time greats, but he might have been. What might have been had Bo Jackson not been injured playing football? That was probably one of his last cards. I don't remember seeing too many Bo Jackson cards after, like, 95. All right, next pack. Let's get to that insert card. It is, I think it's one of those ProVisions card. Mike Mussina, and it says, Warning. I don't know what's going on there. It looks like he's throwing, I guess, supposed to be throwing really fast. And there's trees growing in the outfield. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Very interesting rendition by the artist there, who uh, I guess was too embarrassed to sign his name to that picture. Next, pack up. All right, let's see here. Let's just get to the insert cards at these at this point. Oh, our insert card is a freaking exchange. So we got a redemption rookie set exchange card. How about that? We have a redemption from 1995 Fleer. That's actually kind of interesting. So it says, you may exchange this card for a Fleer 1995 all rookie set card series. Clearly print your name and address and send to the uh address below and let's see if there is a yep it expires september 30th 1995 so they don't even give you the entire season to send that in that kind of stinks um all rookie set so i'm trying to see how much that's worth all here it is the all rookie set books for three dollars and here is the checklist for this set well this is absolutely awful uh, Edgardo Alfonso, Jason Bates, Brian Bowringer, Darren Bragg, Bragg, Brad Klontz, Jack, or Jim Doherty, Todd Hollinsworth, Rudy Pemberton, Frank Rodriguez. That's the set. So um, all those cards are worthless. The Beckett says that set's worth $3. Um, honestly, probably the best rookie card in that set is Edgardo Alfonso, I think. But... Uh, yeah, those are all really awful rookies. So just another reason why 95 Fleer is terrible. Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer. Let's get the rest of these packs out of here. There's the broken down old box. Probably just throw that away. All right. I was excited there for a second. Even though I knew that the uh, redemption card was expired, I thought it would be cool to see how much it was worth. I'm sure back in the day that might have been worth a little bit. I remember I was always excited uh, to find the 1993 Thompson Black Gold Redemptions that were put in packs. I think my brother found the entire set one. I think the best I found was like Redemption D or something for a couple cards. All right, so we have Mickey Tennelton as our insert card with Fred McGriff, the crime dog. Fred McGriff is another guy that should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, McGriff definitely never juiced, at least I don't believe he did. You can kind of tell by his body structure. 
He never really like bulked up and got huge during the steroid era. Kind of had the same body comp composition that he did when he broke into the majors back in, oh, what was that, around 1986 or so. There's Craig Biggio and Travis Fryman. And then we have a little bit of stickiness going on with these cards. Eric Anthony. Remember Eric Anthony? Former Astros rookie. And I uh, can't even tell you who that is because I'm not going to spend 15 seconds to figure out the name. Next pack, just kind of, Henry Rodriguez had a couple good years there. I remember, um, there's that one again, Mucina, with the uh, Montreal Expos. He had a few years where he hit around 30 home runs. I think they used to throw O. Henry bars onto the field, didn't they? I think I might have read that somewhere. It's a candy bar, O. Henry. Next pack, Randy Johnson again with... Uh, John Hudek, my brother is kind of plagued by that John Hudek card. I think he did a break and kept pulling a John Hudek insert card. 1994 might have been Hudek's best year. In fact, maybe his only good year. I remember he was a closer for the Astros. But I don't remember hearing too much about him after 1994. There's the Brian L. Hunter rookie prospect card. Almost done here. A few more packs left to go. I'll probably take all these cards and offer them up on eBay if anybody wants the entire lot, including the two Jeters. Um, they are some interesting cards, that's for sure. I'll just put them on there for what I paid for it, which was I paid 26 bucks for all of these. I think it was, I don't know, $19 plus 7 or something shipping. I can't remember. Ozzy Smith, there's a Paul Malder, and Jeff Bagwell insert card. A few packs left to go. Looks like... Uh, Five packs. I think I used to receive these packs every now and then. I don't remember ever buying these, but I used to cut the grass for the neighbor, and as a tip, he would pay me 10 bucks, and then he'd have a little um, stash of these on top of his refrigerator. There's Jeff Bat, or not Jeff Bagwell, Greg Maddox, who is um, stranded in the middle of an ocean of uh, stormy seas, just sitting on a rock there waiting to be saved. Another weird looking card. But yeah, I used to get these every now and then as a tip. I think in 1995, the packs I bought the most was 95 Tops and 95 Bowman. So at least, I mean, those were two of the better ones that you could buy in 95. Randy Johnson again. That's, what is that, the third time we've pulled that card, I think? Three packs left to go. Let's get right to that insert card. There's Raul Mondesi. That card's featured on the box. And it is a Ray Durham rookie prospect card. Not much value to a Ray Durham rookie prospect. Two packs left. And we got a checklist card. This is Daryl Strawberry with the Giants. Most people don't remember him for his Giants time. There's David Cohn and Ken Hill. Ken Hill of those 94 Expos that got robbed of chance for a championship by the strike. And our final pack in this series of the worst cards of all time. Get this over with. See what that insert is. If there even is one in here, there it is. It's that one again. Not real exciting. Wade Boggs and Matt Williams. And let's just finish off the pack by checking out Will Clark. So that's 1995 Fleer for you. I hope you liked the video, everybody. Let me know what you think of the designs and if you agree with this set being placed in the worst um, sets of all time. Like I said, the design is atrocious. The set list is extremely weak, or the checklist, I should say. Uh, only two rookie cards in the entire base set, and they are very weak rookies. Um, you can get those insert cards, which is pretty much the only saving grace of the set. As you saw, we did pull two Derek Jeters, although that's not his rookie card. It's kind of cool. Uh, to get a rookie prospect card of Jeter. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you'll take a minute and hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a comment down below, like the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.